welcome. Another episode of Suds with Luds on the Dub Network. Today, I don't even know how to sum the guy up. Um, I consider him a really good friend. He's the voice. He's the face of the Dallas Stars broadcast. I think he's actually the face of the Dallas Stars organization. Daryl Razor Ray. Luds. Razor, welcome. Look at I put my best white I shoes on did. for you. Oh, but and, and in your old fashioned, can you please show what's on the desk? You come walking in with this thing. What, this? Like, yeah, that thing. Look, I want to present this to Craig <laughs> Ludwig here. I've watched episodes. I've noticed the backdrop. I see Jamie Ben's bobblehead. I see others back there. It's beautifully, uh, a lot of accoutrements Is it, back there. I don't know what that means, but yeah, it's uh, awesome. But, uh, I wanted to present you with my my own personal <laughs> bobblehead that you can put on your shelf or not. <clears throat> if it, you don't have to. Do you know what? I have Jamie Ben's bobblehead on my little shelf when you walk in my house. Now it will get replaced it's with razors. It's impressive. It, I'll, at I'll the just same time. push him back. Oh, he goes to the back. <clears throat> he row? goes to the back. I go front oh, row. Yeah, you're a front row. Razor, thank you. Yeah, I want that. We're going to keep this right here. So I'm also can trying see. to get rid of them. <laughs> I, they, gave, they gave me too many of them. So <clears throat> I don't uh, know how to sit here. I feel like I'm, I don't want to give like a, a full crotchal shot on. Do you worry about that? You is it hand placement or? metrosexual or heterosexual well, looking? I'll do it this way. Like. I got a bit of a Joe Burrow look today, I think. <laughs> yeah, you can Burrow. have that. Yeah. You always look good. You're always taking care of yourself. You're tan. I saw some people have come in here, ball caps and. Yeah, that's shitty. A, a lot of a lot of trying to trying to sell. A little class, maybe? Trying to what sell. What we need I, here? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm representing. Yeah. Oh, you're representing? Exactly. Well, pool company. Yeah. Kids got a <laughs> pool company that I get nothing out of. I just kind of lined. <laughs> hey, Ludwig, you got a pool? Well, my kids. Oh, yeah. Can I get some? Yeah, I can. Well, guys, I got a couple Everything more pools. Everything is sales, Ludwig. Just joke. Everything is sales. Yeah, but don't you get, like, commission on sales? Of what? Sales. Don't you get something yeah, for selling? Everything things? in life is sales. You have to sell yourself. Look at this is sales yeah, for I know. you. I'm just saying. You had to kids, sell yourself my kids as a hockey me. player back my kids in the owe day. Me. <laughs> Let me tell you. That's a different sales. After my reputation, I owe them. I'll do whatever <laughs> I can to get them out of there. Uh. Uh, Razor, tell me about, uh, first off, let's start with your family. Kristen, kids, the girls. They're good. How the daughters doing? They're good. How about this one, Led? So, you know, it was uh, 26 years ago that I arrived here. Mm -hmm. We had no kids. Got married the year after that first season in Dallas. And now you fast forward to 2022, and my daughter spent a year now working in the star's offices. Oh, I didn't know she <laughs> yeah, was Yeah, no. Oh, okay. The oldest Fallon, she, uh, she graduated from OU. She's a... Big volleyball player, right? She was a volleyball player in track, and she went to OU to be on their track team, okay. high jump, and still has aspirations to uh, possibly jump for Canada. She has dual citizenship. And uh, she's a uh, man. You talk about time management. She's an impressive young lady with that to put in all the work that she does there, primarily with Comerica Center. Uh, but it was very nice, Brad Alberts and the stars. You know, you need a job out of college, right? You, yeah. need, a, you need that first entry into the workforce. Uh, and they gave her that opportunity, and, and it's been flexible enough that she has time to, to uh, continue training and see whether, you know, she can possibly make it to Paris in the Olympics. Wow. Uh, the other one's at Alabama. Yeah. She's... Uh, junior, uh, she plays volleyball there. She's going into PR, so I'm sure she'll be hunting around for a job. I don't know whether uh, <laughs> she'll be at the Stars there too. <laughs> it'll be a family affair, uh, and uh, and yeah, so it, it's all good. It's wild though, you know. She'll be 21 in a month. Yeah, it just goes like that. They're little girls, and then all of a sudden, everybody's legal drinking age. Well, and. Well, that's like 16. <laughs> I mean, depends on which guns are legal. Um, and your wife, Kristen, was with the Dallas Stars Foundation yeah, for she, a long time. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah, good. You brought that up. That, that's nice of you. Because she did, she did start the foundation way back when. She worked for Jeff uh, Kogan. And uh, you remember Jeff? Oh, uh, absolutely. And, and his daughter works there now. So how's this? See? So, so my wife works with, with, uh, with Jeff. In the you know infancy of, of stars hockey here, it starts the foundation in that, and then again you move forward a few decades and uh, Kendall Kogan and, and Fallon Ray work yeah. together. That their deaths are right next to one another. It, it really is crazy. It's the circle of life. Lines yeah. is what it is. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I have a different. But yeah, everyone's 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 doing great. Yeah. I remember 
when I was done and got involved with some stuff with the stars and the foundation had asked me to do a couple different events <clears throat> and one of them two that I remember were you the Greyhound yes yes yeah great on uh, Greyhound adoption yeah yeah it was a great and um, charity. no it's it's unbelievable I go to their dinners and things like that it's it, it's in I get to go I get to hang with Burton Gilliam Bubba from Blazing Saddles so he is a which I'm sure you've run across him a couple I've times I played golf with him absolutely and he's coming in here he, he begs to come in here if you can believe that he'll bring hats nobody begs to come he'll in he'll bring hats <laughs> he bring yeah I know and he's got stories you know, oh, all he's got all the he's best do stories is say, hey Bubba how's it going I know there's an hour there, gone yeah. you just done. look at that little thing spinning <laughs> yeah, over there and it'll be over with <laughs> I was uh, so one of the first things I did um, they had me go out to a children's advocacy center uh, I went in, grabbed some uh, sticks and some pucks and balls and things like that. Uh, didn't know anything about the advocacy center. And a friend of mine, Kevin Hall, and I, we were kind of looking for something to do charity-wise because we were working with uh, another organization uh, kind of aimed towards kids and things like that. Anyway, we go out there, and within a half hour, 45 minutes, um, I walked around the corner with Kevin. I said, this is it. This is what we're going to do. And he's like, 100%. And we had rode our Harleys out there. And so the hockey stuff didn't go over really well. You know what I mean? The They're, Harleys did, though, <laughs> oh didn't they? Oh, my God. <laughs> so we were, getting, we were getting ready to go. We were outside. Somebody, anyway, um, they came out, and all they wanted to do is they wanted to sit on the bikes and you know take pictures and all this kind of stuff. So we knew that's what it was. And I thought, well, this is great. This is what the stars do. And then you start learning about vans and shuttles and buses that they will donate you know for charities and things like that well the next and only other thing that i actually went to they asked if i would go to the ch I, I, it was at the children's hospital i believe it was and i'm thinking oh yeah i'll go there and you go so, here go to so-and-so um they'll meet you when they get there and you walk in how you doing and it's great and follow me so we get in there and open up the door and i kind of i look around and i don't see a lot of children there's not adult, I wouldn't call them adults, but they're the teenager kind mm. of ages. Well, I was going into a tattoo removal for all the gang members. <laughs> that was, they were getting, they were getting, Honestly? The, oh yeah, that's where I was. And I'm thinking, now this okay. is more like yeah, it. There you go. There's synergy yeah, right here. Right? <clears throat> yeah, so thank your wife for that one. So that, that was great though, and I'm into that kind of stuff too. So, um, but yeah, she did, look, she, she got things started. Uh, she's very proud of, uh, of what they did in the uh, in the early days and that and then it, you know the, my girls g got busy and and took her time away and and she moved on which still sat on the board and that for a long time and now you look at what Marty and, and Chelsea Livingston uh, do and the money that they um, spit out into the community yeah, yeah. for children's charities and it's it's staggering. Yeah, Mar and Marty's a perfect guy. For oh this, my God, he? yes, and he did a lot. He was like you. We've had so many uh, terrific people. Forget about players, just just people that have come through the organization and, and given their time to uh, the foundation and, and helping mm -hmm. out. Yeah. You know, it just seems like every generation comes through, and you're thinking, man, they're going to really miss that guy, and then there's another one, yeah. and then there's another yeah. one. So I just think that Marty. Marty likes that stuff. I'm not the guy that wants to gravitate to a big crowd. Like, you guys are special. Like, you like playing to the, I mean, not playing to the crowd, but you enjoy that stuff. I, I don't, I wouldn't say I enjoy it. I, I can do it to a point. Enough Xanax, you oh, can yeah. do, you can do about anything. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you know, that kind of stuff. You're but selling just, yourself short. You're oh, great. Yeah. You're um, great in front of but a crew. I, but I think that Marty is so good at that. Like, and he enjoy, he, like he looks forward to going to this event and having to talk to a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Where I'm sweating bullets before I walk in the door and you try to calm down. Sales. And, and that, yeah, sales. Um, you mentioned Brad Alberts before. What a unbelievable job Brad's done, right? I yeah. Mean, just, and, and almost yeah. when Brad came in, because I, I didn't know Brad really well when he was here the first time around. Knew of him, obviously, met him a few times. But it's just the, the personality that goes along with it. It just seems like it's a different... I don't know why. Maybe it's coming from Jim Lights and coming from Molson's in Montreal and all that kind of stuff. But he just... Ha to me, and I don't see the behind-the-scenes stuff, but it's like this demeanor of, you know, meeting people and talking to people and very personable and, and pleasure. But he seems like he's done a hell of a job since he's taken over. I don't know how many titles he has. He like three or four different titles now, right? I mean... Is yeah. it a Cheers episode? Is he getting paid for him, or is he just getting a title? Yeah, he's he no he he's he's, he's, he's in okay. charge of a lot yeah. over there. Uh, I remember when Tom Gillardi bought the team in 2011, and he was look he was you know polling people and trying to figure out uh, what was the right direction to go in that category with a, uh, a president, and it, it was like man, 
you, you watch, you and I were able to watch what, what Jim Lights did in the early going. I mean, all these rinks that got built around here, and you know, he was kind of a visionary guy and a terrific salesman, and that's part yeah. of that that job too. And uh, the, I think I think Newendike and Madonna and myself, and I don't know how many others, all when he asked said, I think you should at least talk to to Jim and see whether he'd you know be a good fit for you and and mm -hmm. come back and do it again. And with him, you're going to get Brad. You know, it's almost like a package deal, and it was like the um, heir apparent, yeah. along with the guy that was going to be able to guide this thing for a decade. It turns out, and uh, when it, you know, really trying times, right? Yeah. The last three, three years. Yeah. I mean, to to navigate through COVID and uh, you know, stuff going on on the ice, stuff going on off the ice, and and to look at what Brad after taking over. You know, he's a big, really big idea guy. Like he, he once, you know, started the uh, Dallas Stars Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a first. Which we're going to finish our with that. first class coming in, uh, but that was, you know, that's his idea. Along with, you know, I think Dan Stuckel's had a had a big voice in there too. Is just someone that that uh, he can bounce things off and then ultimately uh, get things done once once those ideas move off of right. a board and into actual uh, movement but uh you know he's he just wants this team to be you're never going to be on par with the cowboys here yeah, right we know that but but you have a you have a responsibility especially uh with with our owner um you know based in in vancouver although he you know couldn't get down here a lot during covid now but would like to be down here I, I i think the responsibility on on brad before him jim but now brad to be not only just a liaison with with the group in in uh, Vancouver and Northlands, uh, but you know he's you talk about me being the face like like he's he's the power to things down here on a day to day basis mm -hmm. along with yeah. all the people that he has around him. So uh, I can't wait to see what goes on in the next uh, decade under his rule, if you will. Yeah, because uh, I, I think they're uh, you know they're going to have to figure out arena things hopefully there's going to be more parades here yep. in the next yep. decade and that but off the ice i think they had their best we're talking stars parades right now yes okay. yes yeah, okay. i think they had their i think they had their best uh year financially that they've ever had down here and which, which is impressive it very <laughs> and, and and you know part of it is a big part of it is what they've done and the other part of it is just the market mm -hmm. i mean i i was listening to a podcast and they said by 2030, there's going to be another, I think there's going to be 11 million people in Dallas, Fort Worth. It's a staggering pool of humans to, to pull from. It's um, a lot of rednecks. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of corporate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, which is, which is good. So, um, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought him up because I think, I think he's a terrific guy. Uh, I think he's perfect for the position. It, it's kind of a new blood extension of what... Uh, Jimmy Lights did did yeah. for years, and he's you know he's slowly kind of tugging away from that and being his old man. He can still uh, reach out and ask Jimmy to consult. Yep. I'm sure he's eager oh, to consult oh, from time to time. Is. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the the um, the union between what goes on uh, here in Dallas and the directives from Vancouver turns into more of what we've seen. Well, us guys that are here and playing hockey and things like that have him and, and Jason Ferris and, and the other part of the, the mm. other guys behind the scene for our alumni room. Mm -hmm. You know, we have an incredible alumni room that we have over in, in Farmers and, uh, you know. And it's such an important part of <laughs> oh. of every organization. Like, like oh. you, you can't just turn the page. And no. I had I had another general manager I was talking to in the summer Who's, who we were laughing, and he said, if you, as a manager in this league, if you ever want to know how shitty a job you're doing, all, all you got to do is just walk into the alumni room and they'll, they'll tell you all about it. It's a job, <laughs> they'll right. let you know what's wrong with your team, what you should have done, how you should have done things, uh, who needs to be in uh, different departments. Which you're getting an old school <laughs> opinion oh, too, always. right? And, yeah. But just <laughs> passionate opinions yeah. from that group. Yeah. Uh, and and their interaction with the community because you're you're always going to have uh, fans, you know, that remember the old light bulb yeah. and uh, which is amazing that they still do 
remember. Oh my God! Some, you know, but they it's, always will. It, it's, it's crazy. It's not just our sport. It's not just yeah. this city. It's yeah. it's everywhere. And uh, you know, there's great work that you guys do as as the alumni with uh, again, you know, dovetailing with the business community and and helping yourselves out hopefully and and at the same time selling the brand which yeah. is important well we look like we're an extension of the players yeah. you know what i mean and the organization but we look at that and oh and you're right do we ever critique it I, it's amazing to to after a game you know comes up and then you know we skate as a group on fridays and we you know we have uh, games on thursdays and then wednesdays afternoon my Tuesdays. god it's a schedule Oh. Do you train for this? And, and and I'm on the ice five days a week with our U18 team. Yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So uh, I think I'm in better shape now <laughs> than, I, than uh, when I finish. But, you know, so we stay involved. and But that's kind of around the water cooler thing, except it's a keg. You know, when we talk <laughs> about, you know, what's going on, so what happened last kegs, night. Kegs. Kegs, yeah. We, and we only have two tappers in there. And Nashville, what do you, th what do you think the two taps, what beer is on there? Oh, don't. Oh, it's Turcos. Don't, don't tell me Kingsville. Oh, Kingsville's on there. Both of them. But it's all Both free, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. It's all free. The Miller Lite, the fridge is full of Miller Lite. But anyway, so, and we do have some Belfour spirits and things like that in there. So it's a full, full stock situation. Sauna. It's amazing that all the goalies get into booze. And one of our guys that mm. skates with us, we have, mm. uh, well, <clears throat> um, we should go there. We, well, we will go there. Um, Belfour was just here near uh, last week doing some stuff too. So we'll see the, his uh, something somewhere. Um, we have these, these nice little rooms in there. One, and what we have is we, they're called friends of the alumni. And so there's like 15 guys or so, and they pay like, uh, I don't, I don't even know what the thing is, it, but they get like 40 skates with us on Fridays. And one of the guys just happened to be hooked, hooked up in the massage industry somehow. And masseuses, maybe I should say masseuses. There we go. <laughs> That'd be a better word. Yes. So we have three of them in there on Fridays, giving massages in the weight room. They turn the weight room into massage Well, tables. that is very <clears throat> apropos yes. for So I'm kind of I'm enticing players. anybody that may listen, Kari Lettman, guys that like that are guys we're trying to get out here, Hammer, Hemsky a little bit more, and you know, you got massages and stuff you guys can come to. So anyway, we, we, have a, we have a great setup. Um, okay, let's get away from all this trivial stuff let's get into razor <clears throat> i want to know about golf with you i mean because we'll get into the hockey stuff in a little bit because that's your is that your passion your your pastime is that your thing you go to in the off season golf, golf. yeah yeah like yeah. that's your thing isn't it yeah probably what's your handicap uh i think it was i got as low as a three i think it's a five five and a half something like that no so you're a golfer i mean but i played with you a couple times you're ser you're you're serious, but you're not serious. No, I'm not. Well, you I, like here. Here's my thing with golf. Like I know Turco's a serious golfer. Very much so, and Madonna, terrific. Hall, guys like that. Moral. Yeah. Moral's unreal. Yeah. Holly's terrific. All well, uh, these guys have Madonna booze things behind them, right? Like <clears throat> Brendan's got the tequila. Yeah, in. he should have been a goalie. He's got Belfort's got liquor. Go. That's like putting gas in a fire. But he's got Belfort his, bourbon. Yeah. Uh, Kingsville beer. Yeah. We need a cocktail. We don't, we don't, we don't stray from Well, Lud Suds. We're on the other side of it, though. Well, I had a beer, but unfortunately, the guys that were running the thing <laughs> Was that Rabbit Hole? No, they, no, that was Madonna saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mo had a beer. Yes. Oh, people, Mo's got a beer. Yeah. He's had like four beers in his entire life. <clears throat> He's a champagne guy. Yeah, the guy that, the company that had mine, the, apparently a guy got arrested for murder or something like that, so that didn't go well. That was appropriate, apropos or whatever, how you would say. Apropos. So that beer is gone. Yeah. Uh, you know who has a really good beer is uh, Aikman. I, eight. I sent him a note the other day, like it, it's, and then he sends yeah. back a, a, a little uh, quick email just explaining all about the beer and all that. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, it tastes good too, but it's the cleanest beer out there. Well, eight. There's Razor it's dropping another good again. one. Dropping Hopefully, names. you know, somebody can drop off. A, still waiting for my first case from uh, Turco. No, if you, you got to come to the alumni room or not? Oh, the, yeah. Speaking of that, the alumni room in hockey again. Sorry. Um, do you put the pads on anymore? Never. No. How long has it been? I think the last time I I put the gear on, Turco was at the All Star Game. Wow! And they uh, Andy Moog was was the goalie, goalie coach, coach. Yeah. And asked, he said, "Look, we only have uh, we only have one goaltender. Um, would you mind coming out?" And I, they had my gear and that from the day mm -hmm. days when Hitch would phone me and say, "Hey, Eddie's not practicing today." Yeah. Uh, so I, I threw it on then. They, I think they were practicing at Grapevine Mills. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the last That, that was the last one. time. I, I held my own for Would 20 minutes. Would you put minutes. them on again? Never. No. You won't. So you wouldn't make a no, guest appearance I, with us on a Friday? No. 
No, probably not. I, I just, like my, my body went through, like I had three surgeries during COVID on knees and uh -huh. shoulder and everything else. And I'll be honest with you, Les, like it, that, that's a position. Well, look at Eddie. Eddie never puts the gear on. He plays forward. All the time. So does Turkle. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. It's not enjoyable. Yeah. Like it was. Up, down, up, down. I always found like when I was playing and even in the, in the days, because I was relatively young when you guys were playing and, and it, it was uh, Roman Turk and me, you know, in practice yeah. almost every day, yeah. you know, because Eddie rarely practiced in, in 99. Um, but it was fine because it gave me a little bit of a workout. Uh, it was easy because we were out in, in Valley Ranch. Everybody lived in Cup mm -hmm. Hell. You know, you could get there in 10 minutes uh, and, and go out and practice. And it, it was fun because I'd like to, you know, say, and a lot of contemporaries were on that team. Like I, like I played against those guys, whether it was in junior or in, in the minors or in the NHL. So, um it was just kind of, you know, still trying to relive the glory days sure. for a little bit in the morning uh, and get a little bit of inside information in that for the broadcast, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, but the, the, when you're a goaltender, it, for the most part, it's uh, like there was a with the equipment the way it was, like there was a legitimate fear factor too. Mm -hmm. like like shit hurt. Yeah. Like it hurt. Yeah. Um, and it hurt in practice with you guys. Like not me so much, but no. Yeah, you were usually in front of me dropping down. I was like, yeah. "Thanks, Luds." <laughs> uh, but the 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 uh, the challenge is what I think drives most goaltenders, where it's it's you and the shooter, and and there's a there, there's a high that you get from being better than the shooter. You know, there there just is. Nowadays, I don't I don't know that it, it's the same because they play such a systematic uh, position where they just kind of make their movements to here, to there, to that. And it's, it's not as reactionary as it was back in the day. Is that because of size? Mainly, no, it's, or no, not, it's, not really? it, I think it, the, the main thing is coaching. I mean, it's, it was the first position that was individually coached in our sport. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's, I mean, you look now, teams have, have a goalie coach and then have a, a goalie consultant. And yeah. there's a goalie coach for the, uh, the American Hockey League team. Yeah. Uh, down in Florida, Luongo set up. Like, there's like an, a goalie academy within their within their team for one position. There's no there's no real defenseman. Like you didn't you didn't get a defenseman coach for each defenseman. Mm -hmm. But it, essentially, that's almost what you have yep. at our position now. So y you have that along with the equipment improvements, and you're you're. You're sort of right with size. I think size and athleticism. You have guys now like like uh, Ben Bishop, six seven, and a phenomenal athlete. But he's six foot seven, and you put that equipment and his ability together along with a system. And I mean, if there was nothing to look at at me for a shooter at six foot four, and I was like a freak when I was playing. There yeah. was like Olaf Kolzig and myself and. You know, most of the guys were like panger. They were like 5'10", 5'8", 5'9", at that position. And I think a big part of it was because the equipment was so heavy and so cumbersome. Like when my gear got wet, like I was, I was an extra 40 pounds. So it wears on around. you, plus you're not getting up and down as quick as you possibly can. No, and, and the, way, you know, the way we played as opposed to how they played. Like I could watch a practice, and I, I used to sit and watch Ben, Marty, same thing. Marty was a little different because he was a hybrid and... And that, but but most of these goaltenders, Kari was the same. Like every single shot, they went down on their knees. Like every shot, every shot, mm -hmm. every shot, every shot. Like in in the early '80s, you couldn't do that. Like it, it would it would kill you. It was there was too much to get up and down, up and down. And the way the equipment works on goaltenders now, it allows them to not actually go all the way down to the ice before they get back up again. So it's it's almost like like it's a shortened butterfly that they go into and get back up. But I feel for their hips and their knees because it. I mean, in practice, I, there were times when I think Eddie, Eddie probably only dropped down into a butterfly three or four times in a practice. Mm -hmm. For the most part, he just stood up. Yeah. Same thing with Moger. Or he just went in the corner. And <laughs> or he corner just skated out, drill. Was pissed yeah. off, and yep, <laughs> that ended the drill. So, uh, you know, long, long way of saying. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to wear my equipment out there now with guys mm -hmm. with the sticks and that. They, they still shoot hard. I don't. 
I don't care how out of shape you are and yeah. and how old you yeah. are. Guys can still shoot hard. The puck's still really, you know, it's it's frozen, vulcanized yeah. rubber, and it hurts. So if I could, if I could figure out how the new equipment works <laughs> before I hit sixty, maybe I would do it. But I, I, I really don't have any desire to. Go All right. Out well, that, I'll cross that one off the list. We're not getting razor out because it's came up, come up a couple times. You know, just would razor come Who up. Who are your goalies? Is it random or uh, no? Uh, actually, uh, you know that there's a restaurant over there, uh, halfway down the tollway, close to it. It's called the Texas uh, Texas Star. I think it is a restaurant. Nice, nice restaurant. Anyway, the chef is one of them. And so, but he doesn't have to pay, but we get meals every Friday. We get these big buffets of steak. And it's the shrimp. barter system. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So he's one of them. But there's guys that play in the men's leagues. And, and you know, there's, they're actually pretty good. Yeah, you know, no. They're, they're pretty good goalies. And so. And they're into it. <clears throat> oh, no. No, oh, when they're but screaming no, at us. Like, I've always said this. I got like, one guy fucking screaming at me because I didn't take the back door. I'm like, dude. Like, this is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Like we're Get closed. your man, Ludwig. We're here to go in there and start drinking some Belfour spirits. We're not here for this. We're just trying to get a good good sweat. You know, that kind of stuff. See, so. like, I, I I truly believe that you can't you you can't half mile at that position. Like, you yeah. just can't. Yeah. Like, you, you could be you could float around as a forward in men's league and that. Yeah. And, you know, if... Somebody gets you the puck, they get you the puck. If they don't, you get it, you try some stuff. As a defense, when you got a partner, you know, you screw up or you're too tired, yeah. there's still a goalie behind you. When you're the goaltender, like, like you either make the save or you don't. And then it's another goal, and it's another yeah. goal. You pull something. Yeah. I don't need to pull anything yeah. right now. I don't need to pull well, anything at this point. Well, you're married. In you my have, life. You don't have to pull. You're married. So, and, and it's funny, with our guys, there is no floating around. They're all pissed off at why they didn't make it to the NHL. <laughs> and they're playing against some guys that played in the NHL back in the caveman days. And so they, they're trying to beat you all the time. So That could be <laughs> almost worse. Oh, but it's we still get the upper hand. You know, there's there's times. And so I, I just like the competition. I mean, I'm, I love being on the ice and things like that. So. Uh, well, I, I think some guys can find uh, that their, their sort of competition yayas in other ways. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I have no... Uh, there's no surprise that most goaltenders, uh, former like like guys that played at a relatively elite level, have no desire to put the gear on. Yeah. yeah, like I give Marty all the credit in the world in in those charity games when he'll throw it back yeah. on and go out and yeah. play because I'm sure he doesn't want to do it. Well, really, you called the you were doing that Detroit game we did the alumni game yeah. right last yeah. year, and I don't know if you got a chance. Did you get a chance to talk to Kari at all after that game? No. Or did, he was dead. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could tell. And it was one of the, because he's played with us another one, but Detroit had a little bit better team than normally what we play. You know, they had some guys, they had some younger guys that came and played. And so, you know, we were leaning on Let's quite a bit at times there. And there was halfway through, Hatch wasn't in very good shape. He, Hatch was hurting too. And I got, I remember we getting back to the bench and he's got his head down, which you never saw that. And he's beat red. And I looked at him and said, you okay? He goes, nope. And I, so I used to get it up to Let's one time too. All I saw was this red glow inside the cage as it lets you go. You okay? He didn't even answer. He just shook his head. No, nah, not really. So you they know, both played great. I, I yeah. give them all the credit in the world because I'm sure they really don't want to do that. But no, anyway. no. So you mentioned juniors. Take me through your junior days. Uh, and because you know, you know what interests me the most is who your coach was. That that yeah. year. Oh, and by the way, Brad Lukowicz. Believes that you have a Kamloops tattoo on your yeah, ass. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not going to show you my fanny, but okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I do strong. <laughs> I do strongly believe in my <laughs> you, my Kamloops. Oh, places. we know it comes oh, up quite a bit. Memorial Cups in Kamloops this year. Well, doesn't uh, Dallas Stars owner own yes. Kamloops? Okay, well, he so owns, there might be a tie there. He, yeah, he owns it along with Recky and Doan and Aginla um, and Sid. Uh, we're all part owners uh, when he bought that. Team, God, it's been a while now. They've got a great team now. Mm -hmm. um, young Stankovens in the yep. chamber with us. Played for Team Canada. He's a Kamloops kid. Uh, I, there, there was a, a scout, Bruce Harlson. I don't know if you ever ran across him. No. I, but all through my, like I was debating on whether to go to college or play junior. And I was on lists in junior hockey back then. Teams could just list players, uh, and they could build up a list. And that's yeah. how that's how, essentially how Kamloops got as dominant as they did when those guys 
one. The Memorial Cup's like your your final four. In, so if in you're college. on the list, nobody else can put exactly. them on their list. Like there's no draft. There was no draft or okay. anything. It was just if you had scouts out and they would find a kid who's he's mine, who's you know 13 years old or something, yeah. they would just put him on the list, and then they owned you. And for life, or I mean, uh, or could they be traded? Well, you, you could, yeah, you could be. Oh yeah, you you're swindle, a friggin' yeah. commodity. Yeah, okay. Um, but they, you could be dropped off a list or whatever. But if you had a pretty good network of scouts, and you you were getting all these kids, and then after a while, if you're one of those programs where uh, kids wanted to go and play there because you know you were either the Portland Winterhawks or uh, Camels Junior Oilers, and now the Camels Blazers. Whoever it was, I mean, those were you had a chance to win, get drafted, mm-hmm. all those things that uh, teenage hockey players want. And uh, so I, I bounced around a few teams, and Bruce Harrelson, uh, who was a dear friend, uh, he scouted one cups uh, with uh, Detroit, Pittsburgh, uh, but but he was our he was our head scout back then. And uh, eventually, you know, I was going to play here, I was going to play there. Uh, I lost my eligibility because I stayed in camp too long when I was like 14. I played junior games. Uh, And when I was going uh, into the recruiting thing with colleges, they were like, yeah, we're not sure if you're going to be able to play when it comes down to it and that. So I just said, screw it. I'll I'll not go to school and I'll, I'll play junior. And I went there. There was a guy named Bill LaForge. I don't know if you know that I do name. Know, I know the name. So yeah, I've heard, I think I've heard stories about. So him. coach, co- coach was he was one of those coaches. I had two great coaches in junior. I had him and I had Hitch. And uh, LaFor- well, Holly may disagree with that, but LaFor- well, in junior, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> La- LaForge was uh, he was one of those guys that was a completely different human being when he was at the rink in mm-hmm. coaching than he was off. And he he just he he would have been a great general in an army or something like that. Like he just took young men. Was this and, where Hitch got it from he, then? No, 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 no. He, he like LaForge was nuts. Like he was crazy. And what he had, he built teams. You'd love this. He built teams that were were tougher than every other team, but okay, also yeah. more talented than every every other team. When he coached in Regina, I think they had I think they had. Four five 50 goal scorers and they also had i think they had might have had five guys with over 300, 300 minutes pimps, yeah okay yeah you're meeting both ends of the spectrum so like when when we would play in in like Kelowna let's say and Kelowna wasn't very good and and we would intimidate them all the time we would we played them 16 times a year and in my two years there uh we went 30 and 2 against Kelowna the two games that we lost were at Christmas time, when our best players were always at. Were they World built Junior. the same way? Is no the team? No. Oh, so you just ran so, them over. But they had, you know, back in those days, they had enough. They had enough guys in their lineup that were, you know, testosterone filled. And yeah. if you're going to drop your gloves, we're going to go. Well, they were also their best players. Okay. So they would they would get a lead on us, and then LaForge would just send out five guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, line brawl, and then the game would change, and we'd come back and we'd win it. And after a while, they just realized, what's the point? Like, just yeah. be, just beat us. Yeah, <laughs> don't beat us on to the next team. Yeah, like, just yeah. beat us. So we went to the Memorial Cup. I played like crap at the at the Memorial Cup. We we could have won it, maybe. We we could have maybe won it all, um, but it was a big deal to to win the Western Hockey League. Then he leaves to coach Vancouver. He lasted 24 games. That, his stuff was not going to work in yeah. the NHL, yeah. as you can appreciate. And uh, Hitch, we, we were going to bring in Hitch. And I went with my buddy who had played minor hockey for, for uh, Hitchcock. And he was working at that United Cycle in Edmonton, uh, you know, selling equipment. And, Sports store. And that. Yeah. Yeah. And we went to meet him, and he was he was Hitch. We went down into his office at, at United Cycle in the summertime, and I remember walking out of there because Hitch was really heavy then, like yeah. really really yeah. heavy. And I looked at Chevy on the way out, and I was like, "Can he skate?" Like I, it was legitimate. I was yeah. like, "Can he skate?" Yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, he sort of just pushes to an area and stands there." And he came in, 
and it was like he, he was he was going to do what he believed in and he was he was you know he was hitched like he knew the game inside and out and had his beliefs and he had a you know uh, just a juggernaut of a of a major uh, midget team in Edmonton but he also didn't understand what he was walking into in in junior hockey right. which was just a, you know a different world altogether so it, we we had to sort of help each other that first year and we had a, we had a solid core of guys that had been there for a few years in junior, uh, and he came in, and I enjoyed playing for him. Uh, that he was just the greatest human being to to play for at that time, because you know he was he was all new and eyes wide open in that. And then after I left, and then it got it built and built and built. Man, he had unbelievable teams there and, and a great run. Um, and then ultimately, when they finally started winning Memorial Cups, he was gone, and it wasn't him. But he, I think he really built the foundation of, of what that Camels Blazer um, dynasty was. And, and then they rattled off, what, three and four years. So. so you were drafted in the second round, correct? Yep. Now, was that that year or was that the prior year to that? It was, it was the LaForge year. Oh, okay. yeah. it was. Yeah. So what happened That's in the NHL? I peaked. I peaked yeah, in okay. the second round. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then was it like a cliff or what? Yeah, no, it it it, uh, it tailed off considerably but you hit after the, that. Your career ended. It was injury. They it was so Edmonton owned us. Yeah, owned owned the. I was going to wonder, were you there, Gretz and Coffee? Yeah, so Fuhrer? Edmonton, the the Edmonton Oilers owned the the Kamloops Junior Oilers, and then they sold it to the community after after that year we won the Western Hockey League and and went to the Memorial Cup, and uh, and then that summer. Uh, well, first off, we got back from Memorial Cup as our treat from the Oilers. Mm -hmm. They brought us into Edmonton, and it was that—that that was when they won their first Stanley Cup. So we were in the we were in the room, and and everything. You got a ring? I never got a ring. You didn't get a ring? I was still in junior hockey. I hadn't even been drafted by him. Did you never get a ring year. in Edmonton? No. Did no. you? I thought they had a Stanley Cup ring. No, no, no. Oh. The uh, so I get drafted that summer. You know, and it was it, it was great. It was it was great, and it was also sucked, right? Because you're sitting there and you're like, okay, Grant Fear and Andy Moog are both all stars, and they're 23 and 21 years old. Yeah, ahead of you. And good luck. You know, like if I'd have, if you could look back on it and say, well, if I'd have been drafted by Detroit or something like, like Detroit was awful back then, I, I probably would have played and and played a lot. Maybe you, you never know. But uh, to be there through through those years, so so I was there. Gretz and I left in in eighty after the eighty eight cup, is the way I tell the story. You know, like, <laughs> I think I'm the only person that tells <laughs> it that, it that way. way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the two of us left that year. Uh, we didn't think that they would win another cup, but they managed to win in nineteen ninety, without us. But I was <laughs> but I was there. You know, as the third goaltender through the, the what five of the or uh, four of the five. Uh, in the 80s and and backed up Grant uh, in 87, 88. Uh, he was, I mean, he played every game. Oh, didn't he play like in the 70s? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 74, 75 yeah. games, something like that, yeah. Yeah, they had a lot of trust in me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, it, but to watch that, I mean, I'd arguably the, I mean, you played on great teams, but I'd have a tough time figuring out a better team. Yeah. team than the 80s Oilers yeah uh, and to watch Wayne up close and they, they I think all those players to me have this this same trait about them where their eyes they, they look like they're gone they, they look like they're in a different space altogether and I, he would come back to the bench at times and I'd look at him he looked possessed like he looked absolutely possessed he'd come back to the bench he'd sit down for like 10 15 seconds and then he was up and turn around looking at slides basically like, saying i'm going back go. and they would like I, they never had time on the ice back then I, I don't know whether they can go back and look at it and, and shift length and all that maybe they can with with analytics and technology now but i swear to god it was just like mess you up gretz you up mess you up gretz you up mess you up gretz you up was he just, coached was gretz coached I, I or, think I, or were I think, they kind of careful giving him too much or anything? Yeah, I, I think John Muckler did. I don't, I don't think Slats ever really did. Like he he was a life coach yeah. and terrific yeah. at it. Yeah, 
Muckler was a tactician, and I, 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 I believe they, they, they talked a lot. But there were times, I remember, you know, they, they'd be in a funk with their power play, which was hard to believe when you looked at what they trotted out there mm -hmm. on that power play. But they never really wanted to work on it in practice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they just didn't. And, and Muck would get frustrated and throw his stick. They weren't doing what he wanted to do. And they, got, they were a pretty arrogant crew. When they got beat by Calgary that, that year, like, they, they would not do what the coaching staff wanted them to do. They were just, they were just too arrogant. They, they needed to get clocked in the side of the head. Yeah. And then they'd come back around, and, and they were a different team. Uh, they're a much better defensive team after that. But like to watch young Mark Messier and young Paul Coffey and young uh, Wayne Gretzky and young Glenn Anderson, young Car Yari Curry, like... It was a staggering array of, of talent, and it was tough to keep up to in practice as a goaltender. Like, they just <laughs> light you up. How's your confidence coming out of that? It was it was hard, especially when you'd get called up from the minors, and, and uh, you know, you'd feel like, you know, I got my shit together down there, and yeah. then you'd get up there, and it was just like, choo, 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 choo. Uh, and then you'd watch Grant at the other end, and, like, he, he could go through practices against that talent, and give up, you know, four or five goals, and that's it. I was just like, but there is something to being God. a goaltender, right? In in the NHL, knowing that your club can score three, four goals. Oh my game. God! Yes, I mean, right? I mean, talk about important. And the reason I say that is, we we had a team last year, the U18 team, and I I told Addy, uh, the guy I coach with, and I said. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're changing. I'm changing my philosophy how we're going to coach. We're going to let them up and run, you know, and we're going to live with things this way because we can outscore our mistakes, right? And we have a goalie that's pretty good. Well, they, they, I think you always need those two things, right? Yeah. Like you can have all these little hiccups and issues in between, but if you got a if you got a group that can go and wants to go and create uh, offensively. And you have a goaltender that can bail you out at the right time of the game. I, I played for Jimmy Roberts um, mm -hmm. in in uh, Hartford and in Springfield. The machine Hartford Whalers. And uh, he had I, I didn't understand it in the beginning. He was another terrific coach to play for. Trout was a great man. But he, he had us pantomime. You ever heard of this one? So he had us pantomime and, and to warm up and practice. So... We would, we would have three on O's and three on twos with no puck, but they would pretend they had the puck. Okay. So they would, and, and they were ju they were doing. I actually like this. They were doing like the wildest circus garbage stuff. It was all fake. There were no was, pucks. It, yeah. But they would make it look like they're doing all this stuff and come in and and weave in and 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 every now and then I, i'd make a fake save on something they'd all go nuts and that and that was how we warmed up at the beginning of, of practice i thought it was insane the yeah. first time i saw it and then after a while it was just sort of what we did and his philosophy beyond that um was once everybody hits the red line you can do whatever you want whatever you want offensively to try yeah. to make something happen yeah. But from the red line back to your net, you have responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. And that's how, that's how we went about our business. And with, with that Oiler team, there were times when they'd be in games uh, and they were merciless, right? Like, like they, would, they would play the Canucks and they would just be annihilating them. And there was, there was no foot off the gas. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just like... Yeah. And they were mouthy on the bench. <laughs> oh, my God. And they, but they could back it up. Yeah. And they, they had to learn as they got a little bit older uh, that at some point in the season, you got to buckle down and show some defensive acumen or you're not going to go very far. See, and I've always been, and I, I had said, But they always, had, they always had that in their back pocket. That yeah. We can always kick that in gear. Well, I, I love that. Con I mean, and the reason I like it is we have the hardest time with young kids when they come, and in my opinion, they should know this before they get to us and the younger levels, but they don't. And so, but when you're doing three and O's, just regular three and O, regroup with us at one end, come down, regroup with the players, come down, take a shot. But they don't know how to fill lanes. Like when you move from one lane to the other one, they got to know that somebody has to be, there's three areas of the ice, right? When you're going north and yeah. south, and there's got to be people in those lanes. And I like that that there. And when you talk about at some point in the season, you got to buckle down, that's where I'm like, 
I would rather play it from game one. I don't want to be a run and gun team now for if you have a special See, but here, team. But, but here was the, and I, I understand that, but here was always the issue was if you're going to play 82 games, just. I, you got to have some kind of just, mental break. Yes. Yes. I can see that. Like you got to, you got to let them, you got to let them just go and live with mistakes yeah. and, and go. But at some point it's tough because party is says, well, you're not going to be able to heal that thing on like the fly. Lights, like the that should, switch. Like that needs to be part of yeah, your, your DNA, DNA. from yeah. from day one. Yeah. But then if you lean too far to that and you just stifle all the creativity, then you can't just wave a wand and, and have mm-hmm. them all of a sudden abandon defensive. I, I, I think the way that they did it where they, they let them run for a good portion of the season. And then again, if you have more talent than every team that you're playing against, you can get away with it. Like you can get, you can give up five and you're going to win. Yeah. You give up five and you're going to win. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good. Formula. So uh, I don't know. It's Inter- entertaining for the fans. Yeah, it too. is. Yeah. I wish, I wish that was more the mentality. I, I really do. I, I, now that I don't like, play, I agree. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you. Yeah. I love watching. Cause, Cause like, I don't know how you are, but I, I sit there and I watch the, uh, I watch the NBA and I'm like, God, this is kind of, it, it's, it's garbage schoolyard. Like they just throw it up from anywhere. Yeah, they just th- just throw it and throw it and throw it and throw it. And then you're like, well, that's that's the progression of the game, and that's that's what they believe in. I it, wish it, Harper was in here to hear that comment. It, right it's now. not. You, you can't just run it inside and everything's in the paint and that. They, this is the way they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. So live with those mistakes and and more tries and volume and and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I, w- <coughs> I wish there was a little bit more of that creeping into our game where you just but you still have to win yes and see that's where i i i wonder how gms approach the hiring of coaches and vice versa because when you're interviewing coaches and you're asking your system what's your system i think they all have a system that they I think believe all the, i think most of the systems are they're, probably they are, they're cookie cutters pretty right? close to one they, another they, they start too. changing yeah but I think that when you tell me, and we can go back to the Lindy rough days, and that was, whew, yeah, let's go. But but you got to have it, Dominic Hash. If you, you don't gotta, exactly see, that's where I'm going with this. And if you don't have the asking, pieces that you're, can you're play asking, this way, you're asking a lot from both ends with that. Like, like I think back to then, and they could score a lot, but but they they could score a lot with a with a small portion of their offensive group, right? Yeah. So you're putting a ton of pressure on those guys to to score and score and score all the time. Where you're supposed to support it, you're exposing it. And you're asking that other end to just bail you out over and over and over and over and over again. And I I think that's tough to sustain that way. Colorado find a way. Tampa finds a way. But but again, they have pieces to it. But again, it's, it's the... It's the depth of the ability to do that. Yeah. That, and and again, ta- you know, Tampa trots out eighty-eight in goal like every I, night. I Doesn't know. matter what night. Yeah. Y- you get away with a lot. Mm-hmm. There there are a lot of games that Tampa should lose that they don't up. because of the big cat and net. So, you know, you you look forward here now and and with Pete DeBoer coming in here and, and like. What I know of them, I'm lo- looking forward to watching them play under him. What I know of him and talking with Pavelski, who played for him, and that is that he's he's very set in his beliefs. I think you and I can both appreciate yeah. his approach to this thing. He's very set in his beliefs. It's not overcomplicated. And it's basically that mentality of... We're going to be so good at what we do. What, what we do, we're going to be so good at. I don't care if they know what we're going to do. We'll just do it better. They can't stop us. Rather and, than trying to figure out, well, maybe against them we'll do this, but against them we'll do that, and then we'll change this and, and just over, overcomplicate things. This is things. like a Hitchcock mentality, isn't a it? A little like, bit, yeah. To where, to where you, um, you can just do instead of think. Yeah. You know, it's it's great. I, I love the progressive coaches that come in and and they they want to have really smart players and and they want to throw in all these different uh, systems and reads. You know, read off of this and read off of that. The game's moving so fast. Well, I don't and, know how you read that. Quick. Well, and from a player, 
you know, you try to get your players ready in practice and they try to, and, and be, where you kind of become robots. You know what I mean? We know we react. We don't think that's what I think as a coach. I want because as soon as in the game it is so fast and when you have to think about, OK, where was I hey. supposed to be? It's already gone. Yes. And so if you can just do it, dumb it down to a point and, and then you just it's just go. And yeah. that, I agree with the to let the other team adjust to us. Yeah. You know, but I mean. I don't know if Arizona's tried that lately. But <laughs> <laughs> so you got to be really good, though. Yeah, you do. You do have to be really good. So, well, let's let's go there with with this group this year. Um, one thing stuck out to me. Well, a couple things stuck out to me in, in the Boers. Okay, but what, let's start there. Why him? Well, I think most it, it, once he was available, uh, I think anybody that had a coaching vacancy was like. I think he'd be a good choice, especially if you look at his track record, which is early. Early on, um, wherever he's coached, I mean, gets them to the playoffs, their teams he? are are really, really good. Is that does that mean when you just on that note? Is that because the player if they don't get there two, three years after, is because he's wearing them out? Because from if you talk to players, they'll say, "Well, man, you know, it was, you come in here, you buy in, and then you get worn out by the the message." Yeah, repeat. well, I'll look at it, I man. I know that. That's it's why it's such I went a disposable. <laughs> Commodity now, the NHL coach is crazy, but it all gets recycled can we stop around. Stop recycling? It, it, no. Is it going to happen? No. No. They just don't trust the young guys right no. now. No. And and coaching pro is different, don't you think? Yeah. Oh no. I, but I do think though, I, and I'll go to Monty. I, I'm a big fan of Monty. Didn't work out here for yep. you know reason. Uh, I wish he'd have came back, but I probably that probably not the thing. But I look at those coaches with the players today. Those coaches that come out of college and a junior are used to dealing with them kids on a daily basis. College coaches, you're not just, they don't just come to the rink. You got to pay attention to where they are at night, yeah. where they are during the day, what their grades are, all these kind of things to keep them eligible. And so they're more, but they get dialed into them. I'm dealing with them on a daily basis now. And so I've had to learn how to get a message across. And I, and I, and I have the old guys in me. I snap at times and then I see their faces and I'm like, Oh fuck! That that's no good, you know, because now they're just rattled, and then they're they're rattled and, and all this other stuff. But the the hard things are like when you you draw a drill up on the board, and you'll have a couple guys hanging around the board after you. Okay, let's go. I'm like, what are you doing? Did you not? No, no. But it's not that they didn't understand it. They want to know why do you want me to go there? What? Like, why do you want me to go out here and then up across like that? It, the answer is because I told you so. But they just, and it's not their fault. They just want to know why. They just Why do I do that? I just, from my mind, why do I do that? And so you have to talk to them different. You treat them different. Yeah. You have to swallow some things a little bit more to get them to buy in. And and that's why I like the younger coaches. Not that, because I think it's, yeah, you know I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I, I think my own opinion on on, like, college coaches that have come in and, most of them have had some difficulty. They have transitioning to the NHL game. The, the, you know, Hackstall and these guys get second opportunities, which is good, and I'm sure they they learn a little bit. But y you have to appreciate the fact that it it's so different playing three games in four nights mm. as opposed to having these young guys all week and then play two games on the weekend. And when they try to implement that sort of college mentality to the pro game I, I just I think it's a struggle having it having it set in whereas when you and again I go back and I'm, I'm speaking like I know uh, Pete DeBoer and his systems and that I'm just giving you what I, I've seen heard talked to in that that it's a it's a system where you, you can you can absorb it I think as a player and uh, they're gonna play fast and they're gonna they're gonna know what their responsibilities are in that, and just they can just go they can just play. Yeah, they're not trying to figure out and think this. I'm not saying it's a it's a real dumbed down system or version or whatever, but it, it seems like something. Obviously, at every stop, his new teams have just went and boom, which they is shoot what out of the gates. You're looking now. For. What happens a few years through that? I think a lot of times it hasn't been uh, really anything to do with what he's done. There's been changes in whether it's management, ownership, or whatever. Uh, but it seems puzzling when you look at his his uh, resume, and you're like, wow, yeah. wow, it's and compared mercurial, to John Cooper, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, but I, and I know Coop really well. Yeah, but his mentality is 
different, you know, and I think he he corrects, he adjusts in a different tone than maybe what other guys do. Right. So anyway. But the other thing with he's DeBoer. Got players, so. thing, he's got that goalie. The so. thing with DeBoer, 7-0 and in game sevens. Yeah. 7-0, yeah. 6-0, and 7-0 in and and game sevens. So you're saying if he'd for, have been for a, for if, a, if he'd have been here and the I'm shots saying, were all, 65 to 30, we would have won that all, game. No, game all, seven this no, year. No, no, oh. no. I, I think in our last four game sevens, we're one and three. Okay. So to bring in a coach that so that's why you got a five year deal. Does not, yeah, I, of course. Oh, he does is win game sevens. <laughs> you just got to get the you game just seven. Get the game seven. So one of the lines that I that stuck out for me, I actually had to rewind it because I was watching the video of a of the uh, you know press conference. Was we're gonna unlock the unlock the offense? How do you do that? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how they're gonna <laughs> unlock it. That's, I, I don't have, have to come up with it. I just have to cover it. Because we have, you know, Robertson, Hints, Pavelski. That I think theirs is unlocked. So you don't need that key. Well, the, and look, B Bones, Bones did a lot of that. In the Did bubble. he not try like, to oh my create God. more offense? Th think about where we were as a team prior to COVID hitting. Yeah. I mean, they were as stagnant as any Stars team we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they could not score two goals in a game. And he was adamant that they're going to get their D involved. involved. And, it, you know, it, it, you could sit at there and, and, and look at it and think to yourself, okay, well, this is noise and whatever. Sure. So they, they do that. They go up into the bubble, and Klingberg and Haskin and go nuts, and, and they're a revelation. And the team scored. I mean, it was a freak show up there, right? Like yeah, some yeah. of the stuff that went on. But they were, they were such a big part of it, right? Uh, now, you go forward. Maybe it got too predictable in some ways or, or whatever happened. It, it, you know, it just didn't, it didn't manifest itself that way since uh, that run. So if you look at what DeBoer's teams have, have been like, a lot of times it, it, their D are very involved in what they do offensively. And you can appreciate this from your career and, and how you played. And I know this as a goaltender. Like you, you, you sit there and you're, you're asking three forwards to beat five defenders and a goaltender. Yeah. It's not just five defenders. Yeah. Five defenders and a goaltender. Got the, You've got yeah. three against six. Yeah. From the basically from the top of the circles down. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah. yeah. You you have to you have to risk a little something and in order to have the numbers change a little bit and run offense a little bit differently that way. But don't you have to have the defenseman that can actually do something when they get in that position? Yeah, and I mean Miro's Miro's oh, no. why we know Miro. Yeah. He's a pretty special player. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be an overall... I, I, I would think it's going to be kind of an Strength overall... Strength in numbers, then, yes, probably. Yes, And th that's at that end of the rink. The other part of it, too, though, is... And I, I think what, what really stopped up the Stars' offense a lot was their transition game out of their... Well, they sure spent a hell of a lot of time in their own zone. Out of their own zone. The yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, I mean, it, you really saw it. It was compounded, I think, in that series against Calgary where yeah. they, they just couldn't get off their back foot a lot. So... There's, I, I think they're going to be a club that goes back, gets it, and just goes, like goes. Now, you better be clean with it because yeah. everyone's going, yeah. and you turn it over, and it's not going to look good. So, um, But I, I think you're going to – I think it'll be I, – I, I believe it'll be more movement-based and, uh, and up-tempo, yeah. much more up-tempo. And, and if you can do if – you, if you can execute at a higher tempo than your opposition consistently – you, you should win consistently, and you should score consistently. Well, and, and to that... And, and some, guys, some guys need to friggin' finish their opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Too. That's like what it I can't, mean. It can't all be the guys in suits behind the bench in that. Like, you, you have to finish your opportunities. Whether that's confidence or um, it's how you practice. I, a, lot of, a lot of it, to me, is always, always goes back to practice. And it's like, you know, if you, you just shoot to to hit the glass and test the window mm. in behind the goaltender, you get into a game, that's yeah. what you're going to do there yeah, exactly as well. Right. Shoot to score. Practice like you want to play. Well, that's kind of where the whole unlock the offense part of mine. I'm like, well, how do you, you don't, they always say you can't teach somebody yeah, how to score. you got to go to the water. you got to go to the well. Go to the well. So, um, but you can't teach 
guys to score, which I'm learning, yes, you can. You can repetition. You can find ways to get pucks away Yeah, I quicker. agree. Like, ask Brett Hall, why he scored 700 You can't teach goals. guys to score 60. <laughs> no, exactly. Right? But you can teach, you can teach uh, instincts. Yeah, well, and get pucks off quicker. I mean, just like I, Holly would talk about, just shoot the puck. Yeah. Like, you know, just and shoot hit the quick. net. Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. The, the, the thing that, I, like, use Dennis. I, I think Dennis Gurionov's going to have a very good year. You do? I, I, I really do. He needs to. I really do. I think this system will... I, I, I think the system, um, I, I, I just believe that a guy that can shoot the puck through the end of the rink uh, like he can and skate like he can, the, the, somehow, some way, it gets, it gets slapped together. What I don't want him to do, though, is rely on that one timer on his offside. You've got to start well, I, going to the net. I would like to see him use it again because he, he stopped using it altogether. I, I think his belief in it just eroded and w- w- I bring him up because of w- what you're saying with Holly because Brett used to always say like I'd ask him I'm like what do you you know what are you looking at what do you what do you try to hit and I, I just try to hit the friggin net exactly and, and he's not lying yeah like and I, I swear to you Ovechkin standing over there with that one timer on Washington's power play is not trying to paint a corner no He's, he's just trying to shoot it as hard as he can and hit the net. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's just going to go through, off, in, whatever. And you watch, you go back and watch uh, a ton of Brett Hall's goals through the years. And a lot of them are just straight into the middle of the net, pounded. Guys that score 40, 50, 62 goals, whatever it is, don't really care about the shooting percentage. No. They could give a shit about their shooting percentage. No. I mean, even guys that score 15 shouldn't care about their shooting percentage. You know what I mean? But you watch guys, and like you sit there and you watch practice, and, and you're just like, man, you're you're never you're never gonna get back on track if you just never hit the net. Mm-hmm. You have to hit the, you have to hit the net. Just just hit the net. Shoot it hard and hit the net. And and I think so many guys get uh, intoxicated with that area of the net yeah. and they, they think well every goal he's going down he's going to go in a butterfly net I got to go high yeah you do sometimes but you have to hit the net he, like Pavelski's a great example like he's out there before every practice just going through his his routine yeah. muscle memory and it's just hit the net hit mm-hmm. the net this he does the little game situation stuff hit the net hit the net shoot hit the net hit the net then I stand there and I watch these other guys Bang, bang, bang. You know what you need to do? You take the net and you lay it down. So now you only have this much of the net to shoot at. You're basically shooting at the top of the net. We would do that in college all the time for defensemen, and we'd practice one-timers. And Wills would come out there, Rick Wilson would come out there, and he just tipped the net over. I'm like, what the fuck? Let's get, tell the goalie he wouldn't go in the corner. Yeah. Belfort loved to drill. He'd go stand in the corner. Yeah, sure. And, but he tipped the net over, and you had to, you know. So now it's in this area where, number one, you don't scare the shit out of the forwards. So they're going to stand there. Right. The tip pucks are going to stand right. there. And you hit the net. Yeah. And if you didn't, you skated all the way down and came back. You know, that's what you Sometimes do the guys. game is very simple. It sure is. And so so we talked about earlier about having the big cat in uh, in Tampa. <coughs> do, we have the big, do we have the big cat here now, you think? I mean, I, it's they give him what? Uh, he wanted longer term. He got, what, three, four years? He did. The pre- it was a perfect deal. Yeah. That, okay. That's a, I really, I okay. really think that. Like, like you know, as an organization, you're sitting there and you're like, we think we have one, but... You know, you, you don't want to just slather him with anointing oil sure. over one series. Yeah. Well, and he did have a good year. Yeah, he had a good he had yeah. a good year. And he, uh, the thing I loved about and he, look, he, he's a, as quality a person, great athlete, um, wants to get better. Uh, you know, he's already proven th- what a level he can reach, right? Um, can you do it consistently and back it up all the time? And we've s- seen goaltenders through the years. You've seen them in Montreal. You know, are you Patrick or are you Steve Penny? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like you can be one or the other. There's a pedigree there. He, he's, you know, he's been on sort of this, this curve. And I, I like guys that have been dealt some, some blows in that. You know, the beginning of last year was tough for him. Like, there was goaltenders galore around here sure yeah. and he comes in and i remember at the beginning beginning of camp last year talking with jake and uh you know i haven't really had an opportunity to talk to him because of covid and that we never saw these guys and we weren't around uh and he said well he, he had his apartment he had an apartment rented until the 10th of october 
And that was just kind of his his mentality because there were four goalies in mm -hmm. training camp last year and he's like and ben bishop right and like, not just any goalie yeah. braden Holt, you know vesna yeah finalist vesna yeah. winner yeah hadobin who just taken him to the stanley cup final my, my like car's it, full of gas yes. i'm ready to go yeah yeah um and he was he wanted a challenge and sometimes as an athlete you can try too hard and it just doesn't work and i'm sure he was trying so hard and he was trying to be a good there was too many goaltenders for the number of nets they had. Like it was a, it was a mess to yeah. be honest with you. I thought at the beginning of last year, as as they were trying to sort it out, he went down and he really didn't play that well, which wasn't surprising because I'm sure in his mind he's like, you know, last year I was an NHL goaltender. I thought I proved I could play in the league, and then I, I don't know when I'm going to get my chance again. And that and it, he wasn't great down there, right? And then all of a sudden injuries, and then you got to come back up. And I've, I've always believed that you have opportunities as a professional athlete where you get presented with this opportunity and you can either excel or you can fall flat on your face. Yeah. It, it's up to you. Yeah. You know, here's the opportunity. And guys that have special qualities excel in those situations. And if you look at Jake and the times in his young career where he's been given an opportunity or something's happened and it's like okay see what you got here he's usually stepped up to the plate up. yeah and, was carter and, hart like that the only reason i bring that up because he carter was hart with the guy but and i don't know and there, about there's it. there's similarities like he's another insanely talented young goaltender but i mean the flyers have been a train wreck yeah, like in front of them in front of them to do with and them. around them yeah right yeah oh yeah like, it's just the whole thing is... Well, Torts will figure it out. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, at least he came out with the right thing in the beginning. Yeah. He's like, I'm not, I don't trust that room. Because yeah. that's oh, where... Oh, I know. Talk about culture. Yes. Which is a problem. Yeah. I mean, that's a problem yeah. in general if you don't have yes. a good one. Yeah. And you want opinions. There's a lot of hockey opinions yes. in Philadelphia <laughs> yeah. around that club. But, um, you know, and he, young guy in Philadelphia, everyone was isolated in COVID. It wasn't going well. It was mental cholesterol just, you know, to the mushroom cloud of it mm -hmm. uh, around his head there. And at that position, it can be a struggle when your your team isn't playing well in front of you. You're not playing well. You're questioning everything. Managers are changing. Coaches are changing. All this stuff's going on around there. So he's he's got a, you know, he was a bit better last year again. Um but it doesn't just happen. Just because just you had a great little mini run doesn't mean it's going to happen forever. So Jake signing a, a short-term deal, uh, it helps the team. It's smart for him. Does it uh, give him something to play for, a that flat, big one? It's a flat. And he, I mean, he's, he's, make, he's making there. pretty decent money uh, yeah, I know. as it That's is now. Uh, but you still got lots to prove. And I, he, if you asked him, he would say the same thing. Like, I... I got lots to yeah. prove here. But, man, when you watch that series hmm. and, you know, immediately you look around the league and, and you read some of the stuff heading into the season and, and people he's in, he's already viewed as a top 10, yeah. at least, goaltender in the entire league out of 32 teams. And a lot of people put him in an even smaller little group where he's in there with Vasilevsky and, mm -hmm. and you know, you know Stanley Cup winners and Vezina winners. The, the kid in, with the Rangers, Sesterkin, is unbelievable, too. But he's already worked himself into that realm, yeah, at least. That little club. Now it's going to be up to him and up to, you know, the team around him. The, uh, can he sustain what he did? In the, he can't sustain what he did in the playoffs. Yeah. But he can reach those levels. Right. He, he has that to draw on. But the consistency and, and just being the sort of backbeat for this team, it looks like they have a franchise goaltender. There's one thing he does, and I'm, I'm sure you picked up it, nothing that nobody would ever even notice to me, is after he makes a save, how many goaltenders stand there with the puck in their glove and hand it to a linesman or whatever? Jake takes it immediately and throws it to a face off dot. I don't know, and I, I'm like, it's like, okay, I did that. I'm back to work now. It's like, and I, and I remember the first time I actually even kind of went, what did he, was he pissed off about something? He just took it. He, he threw pissed it off the linesman with that too. That, they got to bend over and go what, get that's it. What, that's where I was going with this one. The <laughs> linesman kind of was skating up there and he threw it past the linesman and the linesman kind of stopped. And I'm like, and I rewound it. I'm like, he kind of went, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, you know, but he does it every single time. And I'm wondering if that, 
that's a habit of his, just like everybody else. Yeah, I'm always sure have habits. He just here. I'm going. You know, back to some work. guys, some guys would grab it and they flip put it, it over, the back of their put glove. it on their cheater. Yeah. Other guys just like I always enjoyed the because they usually tell you, you did some something well. Yeah. Like when it goes in your net, you don't just hang around. You whip it out of there. Right. I don't want to see anybody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But when you make a good save, especially a, you know you make some kind of exotic tantalizing glove uh -huh. save. And uh, you want that linesman to come in, hey, you know, they'll usually tell you how yeah. great you are. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> and then over you go on to the other side. So maybe he's a little more, uh, yeah, let's, let's just move on let's go. here. I think there's, a, oftentimes with him, there's a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Oh, is there a little you're, cockiness you're there? You're damn straight. Yeah. You're damn okay. straight. Here yeah. we go. All right. Which I, 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 he's got a presence about him. Yeah. Which you, I, I think a, an elite number one goaltender needs to have. And we've had the luxury of having, a ton of them come through here through the uh, years, like one after another after another. It always seems like mm -hmm. just when you're like, mm. and and the great thing with Jake also is that he's the first homegrown uh, goaltender since uh, Marty. Yeah, you know everyone else has been Bring him in. acquired. Yeah, so yeah. and and you know Mar Marty was a special goaltender for a long time and, and yeah. set records and really changed the the way the position is played. I, I, don't, I still don't believe he gets enough credit for that. Um, every goaltender handles their stick the way he, does know, he right? did. Yeah. And nobody it's did. The Turkle. Nobody did prior to him. And yeah. yet nobody really, really gives him the, the due for that. So um, in comes Jake, big kid, 6'5", likable. Uh, handsome, going to be filthy rich, insanely talented, and if they're going to win another cup, uh, he's going to be a major reason why. So we have that uh, position buttoned up for a year, or two, three, four, whatever it may be. Hopefully Ten, longer. hopefully. Hopefully longer. Uh, let's talk Jason Robertson. Did Jim Nill spin around in his chair when Stutzel signs a, a deal for sixty-four million or something like that? Did, does, did his, does he get a call from Actually, the agent? That, that may end up being a really good deal. It's hard to believe. But I mean, what, what will he do? What would you do with Robertson? Would you well, lock the best him thing, up the, long term? If that's what he wants, you yeah. assume that's what he wants. I oh mean, my God! If the kid's I, got, he's probably going to continue to score goals, isn't he? You I would, mean I don't think he's going to fall no, off. No, no. Like it, some guys have a knack, right? Mm -hmm. He's. It's what he's always done. Yeah. Whatever every level he's been at, he's been able to score. And, uh, you know, watching him at the NHL level for a couple of years now, and I'm just like, yeah, he's just, some guys just have it. Yeah. They just have that. And what I, what goals I, what are what important. I think, he, he, what he, to me, he does, he knows what he's going to do before he does it. Like, yeah. I just see, and that's, I'm not even talking about goal scoring. I'm talking in the neutral zone. He, he yeah. if he doesn't see something that's going in the zone, yeah. Or it's going to Joe, or it's going across. Like he just does things quick. His, his. I don't know how goal is. I think. I anymore. think a big part of that is probably because he's never never been really fleet of foot. Yeah. He, his bash so, always. Which was, is a great lesson for young kids. Yeah. You need to know what you're going to do because you're going to get caught now today. Yeah. Nobody can hold up anymore. People can skate. But I bet he developed that a little bit because he couldn't skate away from people, uh, so he had to he had to outthink them and be, yeah. his anticipation was was better um, and maybe trained for that. But I, I, look, if you, if you could get him to sign long term right now, if you any manager in this league right now that can get a young guy to sign long term, I think would would be doing backflips. So is it not because it's it, a flat cap? You but know, it's going to go there. It's going to go up. But I mean, they're it might go up to a point where you're going to to 90, 100 million. You're going to be paying lucky. oodles yeah. of money uh, down the line now. From a from a team standpoint, in the in the short term, I, I think it would be best probably if it, they could decide on something similar to Ottinger, mm -hmm. where where you get both these guys on on you know Four well five, compensated four year, yeah. short term deals to get this thing sort of figured out here uh, from a cap standpoint over the next uh, three or four years, and then you know if and again if you back up. 40 with 40 with 50 and then hit free agency isn't your agent kind of pushing you that way too they're going i believe you're going to go 40 plus for the next four years if it, you can make uh, now all of a sudden we're going to bazillions double, we're going to double your and seven. and if he if he wanted to do that in dallas they'd be happy to pay sure. him i mean you're a proven 40 goal scorer though 
those aren't easy to come by in, in <laughs> no today's kidding. NHL. Like you, they, they pay 20 goal scorers handsomely. So, um, I, but, but I, I see the reservation too from, don't you, from, if you're management, you, you'd sit there and you look at it and you're like, we, we can't pay every young guy that has a good series, has a good year, How many games scores 40 goals once. Like, How many games is... Robo score or games like 100, 100 and something now? Yeah, he's in his career. Yeah, I remember he was like, we were he was like a we were a game guy, or yeah. Something we were like compiling that. all the lists of who, who he was uh, on these lists with you know, most points or most goals in the first hundred games. And that mm-hmm. I mean, it's he's it's in a lead company, big boys list. put it that way, right? right? Uh, so it, it's not easy to figure out how to how to dole out the dough. Um, but I, I think in order for this team to be what it would like to be in the next three years, you, you can't eat up all the money, uh, yeah. you know, in, in just a couple spots. Yeah. So if you, if you can get somebody to just say, look, here's, here's a lot of money, no matter what, he's still going to make six or something, At right? Least, Isn't he? Yeah, six and a half. Um, you still have room to add something so that you have depth. You're not going to win anything if, without depth. No. And it might not come right now. It might come after Christmas. It might come in the spring where all of a sudden that um, deal that he signed allowed you to acquire this guy mm-hmm. that allowed you to be deeper in this area and move forward. At the same time, um, you know, contracts get worked off of whatever... Uh, the number is that year on qualifying offers and your next deal and that, and it's a business, and you understand that part of it. So You kind of get paid for what you're going to do in the future, and some people want to get paid for what they did in the past. Yeah, true. That's number a good three. way, a perfect way of putting it. The, the thing about nowadays that I feel is better than what it was, remember prior to the, to the latest CBA and that, they would pay these guys that were in their mid-30s they, they would give them these gold parachute contracts, truly on what they did in the past. And then it, it, it seemed to shift to where the guys that were making the most money were in their prime. You know, like, yep. like if you looked at it, you were like, okay, this guy's 25, 26, 27, 28, and they're making all the money. And then it goes over the hill, and then you can hang on, and you can still make a, a great dime, but you're not going to be leading the league in compensation mm-hmm. when you're in your mid-30s, like it was at one point. And to be honest with you, even on their entry-level contracts now, they make they make a decent pretty, dime pretty on those yeah. there. So, uh, look, there, there's going to be a lot of money for both of those young guys who are the future for this yeah. club. And uh, a whole, uh, it, it's, it's w- weird to say, but I, I hope... I hope they do a deal that allows them to build around him, whether that's a long-term deal for him at a, at a certain number that's going to look like a ton of money, or if it's a short-term deal that allow, allows them to do some really good stuff right now. That would, that would be my hope. Well, when you're talking about big contracts and players playing into the 30s, I think of a couple of them that there seems to be a lot of conversation around, and Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. And so Jamie Benn has just been a fucking warrior in yeah, my opinion and how do you where does this go with these guys well i mean look it, or does it it doesn't go anywhere right i mean but no, wouldn't would somebody if I mean, you those, wanted to move them those contracts are going to end at, at some point and I, the, the thing i always feel like they're two separate things with with tyler and jamie like with jamie and I think it's been stated, like, he, he, you can look at the numbers and all that, and, and uh, the, the timing of when he had his best seasons was perfect from a, a contract and financial yeah. standpoint, right? Yeah. Like it, he's not the first guy that, that did that or had that happen. But it, it's, it's all the other little um, intangibles that go along with what he brings. And there's... Just like with Brendan Morrow, the pre- previous captain, like there's a toll to playing the style that those guys play. Well, you take three, four years off your career. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, when you bring up Brendan, I've used Brendan numerous times with that because 
he just played so hard yeah. and did so many things and played like he was 220 pounds and got into battles with guys that were that weight and and he was more than willing and but that's a team guy that that's what they both are right I think they kind of fell into the category of of Darian Hatcher at times because Hatch wasn't that vocal guy in the room the rah rah guy when when Hatch came to play you were like that's our captain yeah you know you didn't have to say shit. I, I just, you know, it's, it was such a weird thing, their run to the final in the bubble, because it was, it, it was phenomenal, but it was also like it was like a dream sequence or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, none of, none of that happened at American Airlines Center. It was in the middle of this world crisis. It was in an empty rink in, in Edmonton. Um, but if you, if you just go back and, and you look at those two guys making a ton of money. Um, they, they went nuts in the, in the early stages of the 20-teens, right, when they put up the numbers that they did in that. But it, if it would pay off with a trip to the Stanley Cup final or Stanley Cup, you'd be like... Yep, it was worth it. And, you know, Tyler was playing hurt, um, and unfortunately for him, it seems like every time the, this team looks like they might be able to do something, he, he, he's been buckled. Yeah. You know, whether it was uh, his Achilles, his knees, his hips, they both have hip problems. Um, and Jamie played like you'd want your captain to play for two months in jail up there, yeah. right? Yeah. Like just played his ass off yeah. and played hard. And that scene is, you know, it still chokes you up a little bit to see him alone in that room at the end of that run when they Great lost. Shot. Oh, my God. Yeah. Totsie. Yeah. Um, the, the tough part is always, it, the end's never pretty for anybody, right? Yeah. Like when it st starts, you know, father time is undefeated. Undefeated. And the, the difficult thing is you're going to have a big number attached to you when your role on the team is, is diminished. Right. And you start drifting down to wherever you drift down to, right? It's just reality. It happens with all of them. And uh, and then you got you got to figure out uh, can you do you feel like you can still lead playing let's say it's eight minutes a night in, in this role or whatever so and that would become that would become really difficult I would think but he I don't think he's there yet so because I've thought about this if you're a general manager you're Jim Nill do you have that conversation with him and do you say here's where we're leaning. This is kind of where it is. And Jamie's a, Jamie knows. I mean, again, I, we're, I'm not talking about Jamie like his career is over. I don't no. mean it like that, but it may be a diminished role. And it may be those minutes that you're talking about. I don't know if, I, hopefully it's not those minutes, but do you approach him? Hopefully he finds another gust to win. And, exactly. You know, with it's it's a brand new coaching Brett, staff. Yeah. Who knows how he gets utilized with them and, and you, you know what I mean? Like, like do you, do you, do you if, again, if you put yourself in that GM chair, do you have that kind of kind of I never of put myself well? in that chair. Well, you do, but you're just behind the scenes. They, you don't know it. You don't have to take the heat. Think stuff. But, <laughs> but I, if you have that conversation with a player, and it doesn't have to be Jamie, it can be any player, and are you going in there going, you know what, this, it's either going to go one of two ways, and he's going to say, yeah, I'm good with that. I, I understand where my career is, and I'm going to give you everything I got right to, I'm going to earn every last dollar as much as my ability. Or are you okay with him saying, you know what, I'm not really happy with that. I will waive my no move. And look, because it's not like there's not teams that wouldn't take Jamie oh, Benn. Yeah. You want to take a team like like Colorado last year where they have picked him up, you know, at some point during the deadline and you can start making deals. And you look, you start making phone calls to teams that are... I don't even are, know how that works in today's world where you'd be like, okay, well, you're going to have to retain... A certain percentage of salary, of course, in yeah. order because because that player is not going to waive to go to Arizona, exactly. Like, and he's got a full new move, so he. Yeah, I, I don't so, know what he has. So but you could think. you could pick. Let, let's say he picks four teams. Yeah, you know, and you go back to 2014. Uh, Sidney Crosby was like, if he got asked if you were starting a team, what player would you start your team with? And he said Jamie Benn uh -huh. without missing a beat. Yeah. Now that's. Eight years ago now, yeah, yeah, soon to be nine. It's right. a, you know, you know, that's a lifetime in in this league. But let let's say they were, um, you know, their windows closing. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, him and Malkin and those guys are running to the end in Pittsburgh. Yeah. In that, 
Um, there would be something, it would have to be something like that, yeah. I would think, for that individual to do it. The hope would be that that he he still has, well, he, well he's always going to have a strong voice within here. And if he can still back it up with his play, yeah. um, there, there's no harm in that. I, I just don't, I don't know that he's going to score 40. Yeah. Right? No. But you can't, I don't think you can expect that. So the trade-off has has to be in some other area. Um, just like a guy, okay, maybe I can't score 20 goals. Who is it? Willie Mitchell. I can't score 20 goals, but I can prevent 20. Uh -huh. So I, yeah. I, I have the same value as a 20-goal scorer. Yeah, your role changes. Yeah. I look at Neil Broughton. Yeah. Broughton was a 100-point guy. Bob Gainey comes in here and says, listen, if you want to play you yeah. know, for another few years... Change your, we're going to change you a little bit. Now, now all of a sudden he's going out there from a hundred point guy, and he's he's out there going against top lines. Yeah, he turned himself into the shutdown guy. Hitch did something like that with Mo. You know, he tried not to take Mo's offense away, but got it to the point. And I, I always say Hitch did. I'm there's another guy upstairs, the guy behind <laughs> the curtain that's doing a lot. You know, he wanted Mike to be. Hey, we're going best on best. You yeah. go shut down Forsberg. You know, you go shut down Sackick. You know, so and um, the same same thing with, like with with Tyler like. Um, you know, he he's Tyler's come such a long way since he came from Boston as a complete. Oh my God, player. he's he and he he just got married or he got engaged. Yeah, uh, he's at a different point in his life. Hopefully, he's healthy. His healthy. whole thing is health. Um, and and put into positions where where he can utilize his strengths too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's man, that's got to be a difficult thing to always be. Linked to your compensation, Con it, just, your contract. It just comes up. It's almost what like a I, prefix to, to your. What, what am I supposed to, to your say? name? No, I don't want that money. No, that's <laughs> too much. Like you, you don't. I mean, it is what it yeah. is. So and it's <laughs> and, and they look. They're proud professionals, yeah. and uh, it's the trade-off. You know, like we paid you. We expect you to live up to your compensation, and um, and it's not like they're not trying to live up to that, uh, and. Uh, I, I I expect both of them to have really good years this year, but they're mm -hmm. not they're not going to be what they were when they were little fuzzy face no, guys in no. 2014, yeah. 2015, they're still 2016. Give you everything that they have. Yeah, and I just I put Jamie into the category that I, I was hoping and always will hope with certain players, and I'll start with Mo, and then I go to Hatch, and then I go to Brendan. That I want them to finish their careers here. Yeah, I, I don't want them to come back. After a year or two someplace else, but man, sign it's, that one year deal. It's I, so hard to it, it do is. that in. Not like, a lot of players can do it. No. No. And it's amazing. Like, I was looking the other day, uh, I was looking at the Cleveland Barons roster, like mid 70s or something. <laughs> so you, you I had a lot of downtime. <laughs> so you look, you look at that and you start looking at names that were on, like Jerry Cheevers was a, was a Cleveland Bear, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, and, but you don't think of Jerry Cheevers as anything, anything other than the Boston Bruins yeah. goaltender. Yeah. You know, um, Bobby Orr finished up in Chicago. I, I, like, I still have a hard time. Paul Coffey played for like eight different teams. Yeah. It felt like your boy Chelios yeah. was all over. Like it, he played for twenty five years. Yeah, it's true, <laughs> but it, it, it's. I, I think it's really difficult um, unless your career gets shortened, which yeah. you hope doesn't happen, to just finish. Look at Joe Thornton. You know, like uh, well, they're chasing a cup, right? They, in the end, yes, uh, a guy like that is. Yeah. Some guys just want to keep playing, like yeah. Yager. Look at Yager, Corey Perry. Yeah, I mean, they, they, why, did Corey, let him, why did he not come back here again? Like I came out, I came out of the year that we went to the finals. Going, there's three guys that stand out for me from our team that year. We went to the finals, and it was Hugh Dolan, obviously, and he wasn't great, but I came out of there thinking of him. I came out of there thinking of Corey Perry, and the other one was Jamie Benn. And I don't think Jamie got enough credit for it. And and it's only the only reason I bring that up is because I, I looked at that run to the finals. I'm like, man, a lot of things fell into place here, which they have to for a lot of teams. You know, I mean, teams like oh Colorado. Oh, my God. Health, luck, yeah. all kinds of things, For right? Colorado and Tampa, nah, they fell in place. Their GMs had things fall in place for them. You know, they, they made some right decisions. They still like had to go through so, a bad phase, a bad time. You know, yeah, like Colorado getting beat by Dallas in Game Seven yeah. in the bubble, yeah, was tough. Well, Tampa getting swept by Columbus was. What do they say? Tough, you got to lose before you learn how mm -hmm. to win. You know, I don't know if that's true. I and mean, some guys win right yeah. off the bat and they never win again. But regardless, so 
All right, Razor. I the know road you gotta... to Easy Street goes through the sewer, <laughs> Levy. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I haven't I found Easy Street table. yet, but I still smell like shit, so I haven't found it. <laughs> <coughs> so um, I have let, no, I have no answers. I just, uh, I wish, I wish the well, best. Well, you have answers all the time on the air. I wish the you best. are very definite no, no, about what's I going on. Try That's to, confidence. Try to uh, just flabbergast. By the way, BS. Speaking of the uh, puck drops, the BS stops is what I like <laughs> to say. You are now again. I know it's my opinion, but you are definitely the best color guy in the business. And I wanted to, I'm, and I, I'm not the only one that says that. I, I know there's a lot of them. I've always wondered, and we'll wrap this up. Um, I've always wondered why nothing, the, the TNT stuff, the ESPN stuff, and I know you've done some of that stuff, and I know you've been asked to do it. When you're out of the playoffs, when you're when the stars are out of the playoffs and you get those phone calls, do you, and you don't do them, is it just, I want my time off, or is it just a whole different animal yeah, it's and it's become more. Uh, it's Is just it more. It's, e what's that show? TNT or TNT it's, or it's, TMZ? -ish. It's different now. Like I, I would have they, like if the Stars had to miss the playoffs this year, I probably would have done playoff games for them. And I think TNT is doing a, a really good uh, thing and keeping. <clears throat> Because they they don't have enough broadcasters under their own roof to cover the first second round sure. of the playoffs. Yeah. There's just too many series going on. But what they did, uh, which other entities did not do through the years, is they just grabbed uh, lo regional broadcasts, the ones that they thought were really good, and just kept them together. Yeah. And I, I would have thought they would have done the same thing here. Josh and I would have probably yep. done, you know, whoever it would have been, Calgary and, and – uh, and Vegas or something like that. We would have done that series together. I, I, I would have done that. I think TNT's doing the right thing mm -hmm. there. Uh, ESPN have their own people, and they're going to do it the way they're going to do it, which is fine. The, I just, I love being a part of a team. Not a, I try yeah. not to be in, you know, just an unabashed The guys in the trauma and all these guys. But yeah. I, like having, I like having our group, uh, and I like, I like watching... The Dallas Stars, whether they fail or succeed, just watching that journey with them, and having a home team for for uh, eighty two games and yeah. the playoffs, as opposed to going into every rink where you're just neutral, you have your own team on the broadcast and that. But you're, it's I I think we're a very regional sport still, and it's difficult to do it that way. And to in this day and age, or during that time of COVID, and that to be, be slapping a mask on and jumping <laughs> on commercial flights and yeah. trying to get here and trying to get there and cancel flights and this and that, and I was just like, you know, I want to cover our team and just do our stuff. So, um, for the most part, I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing, and if they'll have have me, I'll keep doing it. Well, you guys are one of the best crews by far in the business. It goes as you know, because you've you've been there with us. The like us, the the little poodles up front with the makeup on and blah yeah. blah blah blah, yeah. fantastic. But it's that that group and, behind the scenes. And we've been uh, f so fortunate uh, and have the luxury of having our crew pretty much stay together. Like you know, Mark Vittorio, Jason Walsh before that, who now runs uh, things over at Bally, uh, John Sponsler. Um, you know, Rocket Fuel does digital stuff. We've worked some kids up up through there. Um, now we've got um, Josh Clark now in, in that truck. Like, you know, Dot Com used to work with us. He's now a producer out in yeah. in the desert. Uh, it, just having that continuity. For the I'm the college a, program in the desert for the college team. <laughs> Aren't you looking forward to seeing that? I, I am looking forward I'll to seeing that. I'll come back and we'll talk about <laughs> yeah. do a whole segment exactly. on just that. But I... I, I truly believe that what we do on the air is a reflection of how good the people are yeah. around us and the producer our main producer that we have now um who i worked with way back in the day at espn john norton who does ufc or does uh, bellator he was close to coming here a few other yeah. times wasn't he? his yeah. name was mentioned he, he's phenomenal yeah and it really really i think i played is his brother dude? yes Jeff? yeah oh, i played yeah. with norton's brother yeah yeah oh the norton brothers are that's quite a can you imagine that household at dinner time 
fighting, <laughs> fighting over bread. Uh, but yeah, it's a it, it, it's a it's a big group that does a great job, and and we feel very proud. I'd put our show up against any yeah. regional and most national shows, and yeah. a lot of times we put out. Uh, a bigger show than the Nationals do when they come to town. So uh, well, it's, it's to, to witness it firsthand. It first off, you feel like part of the family, and and you held my hand through a lot of shit, which that had to be rough for you. I know that we drank a lot through that too, so <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, actually, I remember one night you slept in your car. I think we went out for a meeting, and I think. You I think you spent the day and afternoon in the car. So anyway, that's what happens on Suds with Luds. Um, who the last, I'll I'll finish with this one. Well, I got two of them. I'll finish with the. Uh, you keep one. threatening to finish this, and I know, you don't. I, no, you keep talking. You're <laughs> fucking awesome. That's why this is nice. You're like Heiko on my <laughs> podcast. The I'm Pod like, Man. I'm the, like the Pod Man Rush. Pod I'm, Man I'm, Rush. I'm, I'm done. Man rush. I'm all done. And then Heike goes, he calls himself Heike Columbo. Doesn't shut up. Though. He calls himself Columbo, and he's like, well, one more thing. <laughs> he's just like, I, he's in, I find it interesting. <laughs> um. Who does Dallas have to beat out in their division? Where do, where do they? Who has to do that to finish ahead of? I should say, Colorado's a good team this year. So now we got St. Louis, we got Nashville, we got Minnesota. They're going to have to finish somewhere above somebody. I think they're. Uh, where do you think they fit? I think in the they're division? better than. I think they're better than those teams. Like I Colorado? think. Colorado. Like I think a lot of teams in the in the division got worse. Okay. Um, I, I really, I really. Well, Minnie, Minnie's got a, a problem with their cap. I mean, Min, Minnie's got a problem. I, I don't know that St. Louis is as good as as what they were. I don't know that Nashville's. You know, they, they got a heroic year out of their goaltender, yeah, that's UC like a, Soros, and, and, yeah. and, and yeah, maybe and their, and their defenseman. Like, I don't know if he can yeah, repeat that. Yeah. Roman Yossi. Maybe they can do it again, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I think they, I think they can jockey with. Colorado and and uh, at least make it interesting to see what supremacy in the division looks like. Okay, you know, like Colorado's going to have to go through that year where yeah, the year after the cup thing, where everyone's yeah. like, let's yeah. measure ourselves against the Colorado Avalanche, yeah. and and yeah. maybe they can maybe maybe they can slide into a position where they're they're threatening for the division lead uh, late in the year. The Pacific's going to be better than what it has been. There's mm -hmm. some. Yeah. LA is going to be better. There's some good teams out there. Yeah. Shit. Calgary might be better than what they were last year. We'll see. I think they will. They got rid of two big names and you they know, may be tougher to play Edmonton's, against. Edmonton's going to. They're making a move they're, up. Right? They're, they're try, like, there's some, there's some good teams out, out there. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I'd like to see them. Play to their potential. Um, I'd like to see them state that they'd like to do that yeah. again. Yeah. I, 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 I'm a believer in that. It's like, like we're going to try to win the division. Well, there's pieces, right? And, the pieces and, are coming. And, and then go out and back it up with all those fins. Okay, last one. You, as a broadcaster, I, I think as a player, you, you, you always wanted to, your dream was to play for with this team or with these players or whatever. Who would be your fantasy or whatever to, to do a broadcast with? Back, going back to the beginning Ooh. of time, you have because you must have idols that you've Ooh, had. That's a broadcast. humdinger. God, that's a good question, Luddy. I've been saving that one for last. Well, I, I mean, I have my idols, right? Uh, m most of my idols were play-by-play -play guys. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, Danny Galvin was my my biggest hero. Um, on the hockey on the hockey side. Probably if I if I could do a booth with Dick Irvin and Danny Gallivan, um, but three man booth they don't usually work. Uh, Bob Cole would have been interesting. Little pint sized Bob Cole would undo his pants before the <laughs> bra. Did you hear this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about he'd it. Undo his pants. Yeah, get those cigarettes yeah. in there. You know, little guy like this and boom, booming voice. And then you did not talk. Harry would tell me. Harry Neal would tell me these stories. Like you didn't say anything until Bob, but yeah, like a go goal gets scored or whatever, and you yeah. throw the Heisman out at you. <laughs> I mean, just hold it there. You'd hold it. Then you were allowed to talk. He he hated the the by play uh, between groups and that. I mean, if I had my my druthers in just a fantasy um, 
other sport thing and uh, like to work with Madden to I would love oh, to just yeah. watch Madden yeah. do a game yeah. like just be there and wa- watch how he prepared and and what it looked like uh, I think that would have been phenomenal uh, from an analyst standpoint and from a, a true elegant uh, longevity play-by-play guy uh, Vin Scully, who did it by himself forever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see his preparation on that side, too. Can you imagine doing 160-something baseball games by yourself four hours over and over and, and, and did it for seven generations or whatever it was? And, and baseball, there's so much downtime. Oh, it's all that talk time and just you know stories and how we weave them yeah. and... I think those two guys would have been um, would would have been phenomenal to to do a game with. If you if you look at it, um, I, I got to work with with Doc Emmerich. We we called the some of the games, not all of them, but some of the games in the first meeting of uh, Crosby and Ovechkin, and uh, that was that'll go down as a pretty mm-hmm. special little run. And he was he was f- fantastic to work with. Um, very accommodating to me. I was just like, holy crap, like, what are we doing here? It's Doc. Yeah. It's these two guys. Um, we did game seven in, in Washington together, and the Penguins beat them in there. Like, it, that'd, be, that'd be a tough one to top, I think. So uh, Hockey Night in Canada with, with the old Canadian boys, Gallivan and, and Dick Irvin, or flick it over and, and do something on the other side. All right, Razor. I will let you go. We ran and out of we ran we, this, this thing shut down. The screen shuts us. down. They knew where they swirl that thing around. They're, they're, now the lights will probably shut off. I don't know if we paid the bills here, but Razor, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. See that? Another. This is the episode that everybody will be watching. See this? See this? So, right there? Yeah. What is that? that? Oh, you got your name on your shoes. I got the bobblehead razor here. I'll have to send a picture in where it's sitting. Jamie Ben is it's moving branding. to the back of the shelf. That's, razor, dude. That's branding, man. Thank you. That's branding. Yeah, Luddy. Thanks for having me on. Oh, Good luck with pleasure, all this. Man. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Salesman. I know. Salesman to the end. It is what it is. Thanks, Razor. You're welcome.